How you doing? Are you excited for today's video? I'm also excited. Look how happy you are. What is happening, peeps? Today we are in southern Texas, more specifically Corpus Christi. This is a place I've never been to. This is definitely the farthest south I've been to in Texas. This morning we filmed uh, an epic banger. I got to fish this part of Texas for the first time. We did a lot of saltwater fishing. We caught some redfish today, including these two beautiful little specimens right here, which are called speckled trout. Now, I don't normally get a chance to catch these fish, and I especially don't get the opportunity to eat these fish. And from what I've heard, they're super delicious. So these guys are hanging in our live well right now. And I thought it'd be appropriate to go to Walmart to not only pick up some ingredients, but some goods. So we basically have two trout, uh, one of which I'm gonna cook completely different than the other, but both are gonna be just straight up over the fire. I'm not gonna use my propane grill. I'm not gonna use a stove or anything like that. We're gonna do this like super old fashioned. You could even say primal or, or caveman style if you want to. So I just needed to pick up like a few different tools, nothing super extraordinary, but yeah, I'm stoked. It's always a good time at Walmart. Get some of the goods. Okay, so I literally came in here only to get <laughs> like the essentials for cooking fish and somehow I ended up with all of this. Honestly, I'm shopping for the whole week because we are gonna be here for quite some time. Ooh, which eggs do I want? Always check eggs, kids. That's my parent tip for the day. Salt and vinnies. The best, literally. Wow, this is not good. What else should I get? I should get more chips. Oh, they got kettle cooked salt and vinny too. Oh, big decisions here, what do I choose? Spicy cheaters. Yoop. Mission accomplished. We got what we needed and a little bit extra. I got spices and a lot extra else. Uh, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got carried away. Also, I bought some Pokemon cards too, in case you're wondering. <laughs> uh, let's, yeah, let's keep that up. <laughs> okay, okay. In all seriousness, we have to put all this away in the freezer. This is the beauty about having a car like this is we can just put it straight in the fridge slash freezer. And the cool thing is, is when we get back to our campsite, we've got two beautiful speckled trout just waiting to get fried up and cooked. We'll meet you guys back at the campsite with some speckled trout recipes coming in hot. All right, where's our little jimmies at? Oh, they're not alive. I know that was probably kind of a sore sight, but like 30 minutes ago, these guys were alive in the live well. This is exciting. I'm so freaking hungry. We've not eaten anything all day. We had like an oatmeal, which is like an instant MRE, whatever. It was okay, but not what we wanted. Um, so these trout skis are gonna taste delicious. First things first, we gotta flay them. Uh, I'm gonna do two different types of flays, and these guys, again, not the best at flaying fish, but I'm gonna do my best. First fish, we're just going to gut and cook whole. Next one, we're going to flay and uh, kind of see which one's better. I've had my fair share of whole fish, but I also primarily order just like fillets and I go back and forth. So we're gonna test that theory today. We're gonna cook them in two different ways as well. So trout ski number one, we're going to cook whole and trout ski number two, we're going to flay. Alex is so generous to flay the big guy and I gutted the little guy. So this guy's completely clean, no gills, no small intestines, no large intestines. He doesn't even have a heart. All he has left is a head and some juicy meat on him. This is how I'm going to prepare both. Very, very straightforward. I'm going to cook the fillets in tinfoil. This is a little style that I, I tried in Nantucket and it worked really well with bluefish, which is a fish that isn't supposed to taste good. But we're gonna try it with uh, speckled trout, which is notorious for tasting good. So the idea here is to pack as much flavor into this uh, tin foil casing. And again, we got this at Walmart, 89 cents for 50 square foot of, <laughs> of aluminum foil. So I'm gonna pre-butter this here aluminum foil. Get this guy all ready to go. Just kind of spread it around. It doesn't have to be super even. Its intended purpose is to melt once it heats up with the fish inside of there. All right, that's a lot of butter. I think we can we can we can we can take it easy on that. Okay. So then I'm also going to salt the booter. Again, this is a flavor packet. That's all this is. I also really like rosemary. Just let it rain. Okay, cool. Now what? Uh, you ask. Oh, simple, easy. We have to we have to marinate our fillets. So again, just a little bit of salt because we doused the, the tin foil on salt. Uh, what I pick for seasoning is this uh, chili con limon. And it's just good, like lime, anything citrus related tends to go good with fish. So I'm gonna put, I put a little bit of salt in the flays. Again, not too much, because we've already salted 
our flavor package. And I'm just going to lightly and gently put some of this on there. <laughs> Once we've put our fillets through the ringer and seasoned them, we are now going to gently tuck them away in our nice little tin foil blanket. But before we do that, we have to say sweet dreams with a little bit more rosemary. We fold over the tin foil, not to mess up any of the fillets, but enough to enclose them. And we're just gonna kind of twist the ends so no juices escape. The sacred juices within this little tin foil recipe must be withheld within our package. There you go, nice little cradle of fillet. And then basically what we're gonna do, well, I'll show you what we're gonna do later, but let's move on to the next uh, seasoning process. So this one's gonna be a little bit different. I'm not going to probably butter this guy because I'm gonna have him on kind of a rotisserie. If I put butter in there, it'd probably fall out. I'm sure there's a way to do it. I'm sure you could probably like, I don't know, tie. Like I'm not, listen, we're not gonna get fancy. The whole objective here is to keep it simple, right? Cause we didn't even flay this fish. We're legitimately gonna put this guy on a stick and cook it like a caveman. But unlike a caveman, we are gonna put a little bit of salt on there. Just something to get the flavor flav going. It's apparent which one's probably gonna taste best, but I think that with the smokiness over the open flame, I think it'll taste good. Now what, what do I do? In all honesty, the best way to go about this, open flame, cook it, take off the skin after it's done, and, and then, then add some seasoning. I agree with you, keep that in the video. It's not really supposed to be a versus situation. That's not the point here. I'm just trying to show you two different methods of cooking. This one's kind of a more survival thing. This is like bad and bougie. Put a little bit of salt in this guy. Not gonna mess them too much. Just gonna let the smoke and the flame do its work. Okay, next step is to get the fire going, which might kind of suck because it's a little bit windy out, but let's go check out the the fire situation. I have an idea. So this is where the cooking's gonna take place. Nice little beach, it's a little rocky. That's okay, actually a perfect situation for cooking. Right here is literally where we caught the fish today. So it's only fitting to cook and eat the fish where it was born. Kind of messed up now that I'm thinking about it, but hey, whatever, it's nature. Circle of life, right? Okay, so we're gonna nail these little steaks. This is gonna be kind of one of the situations where I'm gonna have to figure it out as I go. But once I do figure it out, it's gonna be dope. Bing, rotisserie done. Sweet. In an ordinary survival situation, because I'm already reading the comments now, you would just use sticks, right? You wouldn't you wouldn't crawl to the nearest Walmart, where there's obviously food, and then come back to your, your recently killed meal. You would just find sticks. But the problem is we're on the beach right now, kind of a conservation area. You can't just like grab sticks. So I'm using this as an example, but this works really good. These, these are bamboo sticks, you know, like 80 cents at Walmart, super cheap. I position them and stuck them into the ground using the ties for my steaks. So that looks that looks pretty good. And the fish, as you probably could imagine, is gonna go right here. I got an idea. Wow, those bitches went up in flames. Wow, those are really good fire starters. Oh my goodness. Is it because it's mesquite? Is that why it's burning so damn good? Yeah, there we go. Keep this under control. I did not think it was gonna be that quick. So we've got two little fire pits going on right now. This one is our uh, <laughs> our caveman barbaric style. I don't know if this is gonna work. The problem is it's so damn windy and I'm having a hard time getting this wood to catch, which by the way, we picked up for $5 a bundle. Again, this is a preserve. You can make fires here and cook, but you can't like just, you know, chop down trees for obvious reasons. On this side, we've got coals and this is where we're gonna cook the uh, tin foil uh, recipe. So looks pretty damn good. I like it side by side. Kind of funny. I gotta whisper right now because the campsite we're at has quiet hours and we're like the only one up right now. But I've got good news. Our fish are finished. The caveman rotisserie speckled trout and the gourmet bougie tinfoil blanket trout are all done. I would say it definitely took longer to cook the rotisserie one just because like it was open flame. The one of the tinfoil cooked like really quickly, especially with all that butter. Here is what the tin foil one looks like. Definitely, I mean, it's quite obvious which one's going to taste better, but I am curious to see how just plain trout tastes like over the fire. Probably gonna be some smokiness, probably gonna be 
like very flaky. Oh yeah, look at that. I'm quite surprised. That's actually really, really good. No salt, no pepper, no seasoning, no butter. Flat out, over the flame, so damn good. That's good, I, I, I would do that again. I was surprised, I thought it was gonna taste like, <laughs> it's pretty good. Okay, so rotisserie, as of now, it's hard to compare because I haven't tried this one, but as of now, solid B plus. Not too shabby. All right, let's try the chili one. This is the chili blanket filleted version. Okay, so it's good, right? Because it's speckled trout. Obviously, it's going to be good, but it doesn't blow me away. Maybe just because that's like, I, I suck and I'm not like very skilled. I honestly thought adding all the butter, all the seasoning would kind of bring it to life, but it almost kind of, oh, whoops. <laughs> it almost kind of dulled it down. It's like this fish has an already really good taste. And I feel like I really neglected that, that taste by just adding too much to it. It's good. Am I gonna eat the whole thing? Yeah, for sure. But this, it literally, honestly, I, I, I'd go as far to say this is almost like half cooked, half smoked. It's smoky. And it's like, it's lean, right? It's just good protein. Anyway, that's pretty good. Let me know in the comment section below uh, which one you would prefer to eat. Would you choose a rotisserie or would you choose the heavily buttered seasoned version? Uh, personally, after trying this, it's a little bit harder to do the rotisserie, but I think it just maintains its natural flavor. I dig it. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. We're gonna sign out right here. Let us know in the comment section below what we should catch and cook next we gotta head to bed right now i'm sure we've woken up some people with this outro but uh thank you so much for joining us on today's episode i appreciate the view and as always folks keep cooking never stop